Well, now, obviously, this is we're no prosthetic. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, How woo. you doing, Jono? <laughs> oh. It really is a gut punch. Hi, I'm Jonathan Decker. I'm a licensed therapist and I love movies. This is Chewy, our mascot. He'll be in and out because he does whatever he wants. And I'm Alan Seawright. I am a professional filmmaker and I need therapy. Largely because of the film that we're going to talk about today. Jono, are you prepared? Do you know what we're going to look at? We're watching The Thing, right? John Carpenter's classic sci-fi horror. Mm -hmm, from 1982. I had, this had been on my to-watch list, and I, I hadn't be. seen it until you said we need to do this film. So I recently watched it for the first time, and oh boy. Right? This is the heebie-jeebies. All of the heebie and most of the jeebies. I should say right up front, this is an R-rated movie. It is a pretty hard R-rated movie. Mm -hmm. If you're a sensitive viewer, we're not going to show a lot of gore here, but you may want to just skip this episode and go to one of our friendlier ones. You don't need to see this in order to be a complete person. Yeah. You need to see Schindler's List. Yeah. This will not complete you as a human, and, but and it is good fun. We recently did a Tangled episode that might be your speed. If you're still here with us, the thing is basically researchers in Antarctica encounter an alien creature that crash landed 100,000 years ago. It can perfectly imitate any life form it comes across, including dogs, and people, yeah. when it imitates the people, it can talk like them, it can act like them. So any person could be a thing you don't instead know. Instead of actually your friend. Instead or... of your friend, Bennings. It isn't Bennings. Yeah. Until it flays itself, rips itself open, eviscerates you, absorbs you, and turns you into something else. Goo and, yeah. Yeah, so it's a psychological horror movie with lots of splatter in it, which is like my favorite. But imagine if like, instead of the traditional morphing, shape-shifting that you see in a lot of movies, it was much more realistic and horrific because in order to change shape, it's not just like some cool CGI morphing that you see. It's actually like, in order to change shape, I have to completely turn myself inside out yep. and rebuild myself. And that's why it's so horrific and also so awesome. Like, yeah. so Well, and halfway through each change, it's not just a human turning into something else. It's like there's a dog coming out and there's some weird alien with crab legs. And then there's a and human there's face just, and it's like, yeah, yeah. They're it's all, awesome. Ugh, it's super gross, but it's really just fascinating, fantastic makeup effects work. Easy, Welcome easy. to Cute Puppies in Antarctica, easy. the film. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to point out, it doesn't have much to do with the themes of the film, but this dog is the best actor in film history. Yeah. Just cold and almost, ca like you can feel the calculation yeah. in the dog. Well, and how much of that is the dog and the training and the performance, and how much of that is the edit where they find just the, the right moments? The edit is certainly helping. But some of these things, you know, there's a couple oh, of long yeah. takes in here of the dog just performing really yeah. interestingly. But there's lots of movies where dogs run in and they train them to be loving and to lick people and to play with them, right? Yeah. But to actually, like, look at this. Well, now, obviously, this is now we're a prosthetic. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, How woo. you doing, Jono? <laughs> oh. It really is a gut punch. It's visceral is the way I would describe this. Yeah. It's very, it's very, um, well, I'm thinking the word cynical, but what, no, what's the word? Nihilistic. Nihilistic. Is it nihilistic or nihilistic? I think you can pronounce it either way. I've heard it both ways. It's both ways. You go nihilistic, I'll go nihilistic. All right, sounds good. Sort it out in the comments. <laughs> it, it is a dark, bleak film, and when you suggested it for cinema therapy, I was like, I watched it, I'm like, that was awesome, and the practical effects, I'm not even a gore guy, yeah. but it's so creative that even I lapped that up. But I, at the end, I'm like, I don't know where we're going to go with this for an episode, so I'm interested to go on the ride with well, you. Well, and, and the reason I wanted to watch it is because, you know, we're filming this right at the sort of the tail end of the initial lockdown for COVID-19, the coronavirus yeah. lockdown that we've had here in the United States. I know around the world there have been similar things. And we're opening up now. If you're watching this several years in the future, you'll know better than... We know. Did what we happened? make it? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're watching it in a shelter somewhere. Did we survive? <laughs> the, the experience of being in lockdown and the weird amount of distrust and just not knowing what other people are bringing. Mm. What are they carrying? What are they? Chewie's the carrier, though. He's going to take it from Chewie you. Chewie is the thing. <laughs> he is the thing. Halfway through well, the movie. He's... <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I do see, though, 
because uh, we often strive to do something uplifting or something that gives, and there's not any uplift in this film. No, not in the film. But cautionary tales can be helpful. Absolutely. Therapeutically, and this is definitely a cautionary tale. Another parallel I see to life right now is, you know, we are not, we're political people, like, we are people, and so we have our politics, but we strive to not be political here, but in, outside, there's so much mistrust. He ain't tying me up. Then I'll have to kill you, child. Then kill me. You know, what do you really believe in? Are you on my side, or are you on the other side, right? right? At this point in history, our country's kind of tearing itself apart. Yeah. I mean it. Uh, because of mistrust, because of seeing each other as a threat. I guess you do. See, I think it's very topical, and the good thing is, well, it's not good, it's sad, that's gonna be true five years from now, and 10 years from it's, now, it's... The, human nature. The themes in this movie, the reason that this movie sticks around so well is, A, it's very, very scary, mm -hmm. but B, the themes are so universal and so applicable to human nature. Yeah. That it's just brilliant, so let's get into it. I know I'm human. Okay, and here we are setting up what the if thing is and things, what it means to the me people. Right now. So some of you are still human. This thing doesn't want to show itself. It wants to hide inside an imitation. It'll fight if it has to, but it's vulnerable out in the open. So here everybody's just figuring out kind of what's going on. It takes on. us over. And Kurt Russell is explaining to the and audience, no I mean, enemies. To everybody, Nobody what the thing it. is and what this means. And then it's one. Oh gosh. So this, this, this is a thing. They're gross. Yeah. They know that's not really their friend. Oh. It's so eerie. And the score, I mean, a lot of 80s synth scores don't age well. This one ages beautifully. It just feels exactly right for what this is. Well, it's like John Williams' Jaws. Not that it sounds the same, but it's beautifully simple. Yep. Oh my God, what was happening to him? If it had more time to finish, it would have looked and sounded and acted just like Benny's. I don't know what you're saying. That was one of those things out there, trying to imitate him, Gary. Come on. Gary is the president of the United States and clear present danger. Years. I am the president of the United States. Yes, he is. He's my friend. We've got to burn the rest of them. So once again, we have this, this thematically where you think you know somebody and they're different than you expect. I mean, here it's literally an uh, aggressive... A completely different organism. Yeah. Right. But you learn something like when you're in quarantine, when you're stuck with family, you're stuck with your friends... And not just quarantine, but then society writ large right now. You don't know who people are or what they're carrying, and you don't know what they're going to do to you. Yeah. I and mean, I've had people on social media that I thought were my friends completely attack my character uh -huh. because he was reacting so emotionally to the fact that we disagreed. Right. Right? It's not, and, and we have this thing now where, like, if, you, if I don't agree with you, then your character must be bad. Yeah. Because I know that my position is right and it is morally right. And if you are opposed to it, then you are wrong, morally wrong, therefore evil. And now we're starting to just like separate into, so, we're so tribalistic and it's survival. Anyone messes with me and the whole camp goes. Like we're, we're all in this survival mode and we're banding together against somebody else. And that's, that's what's happening here. I mean, here it's an aggressive takeover of a space alien. But just the mistrust that happens when you are, when you spend so much time with some with people, and you think you know them, and we just got to be really really careful that we don't turn into enemies needlessly. Right. Nobody trusts anybody now. We're all very tired. Well, and this just there's nothing else. This I just can feels do. like this moment. Just right? wait. Nobody trusts anybody. We're yeah. all very tired. There's We're nothing tired. we can do. Yeah, yeah. RJ McCready. And oh, our hair is all, everybody's hair is out of control. Everybody's hair is out of control. We all have big beards. What can we do? What can we do? Whether we make it or not, we can't let the thing freeze again. Maybe we'll just warm things up a little around here. So this is towards the end of the film. And it's right here, you know, at the very last 10 minutes of the film, they finally, the entire time they've been 
bickering and fighting amongst themselves, yeah. they're distrusting each other because they don't know who's a thing and who's not. They finally have a group of people that they've done a test and they know that they're not things. Yeah. Right? These are the actual humans. And they finally decide to come together and they figure out a way to beat the things that are left. Yeah. It, I, I find it so fascinating that when they were divided, this thing could spread and multiply and cause yeah. havoc. Yeah. And when they were united, it couldn't. And before we start going down the rat hole of we're so divided and the country is tearing itself apart and there are problems throughout the world, that is true. But what is also true is we did something and, and you know, the scientists have backed us up on this. This is not just me blowing sunshine up your skirt. Uh, what a visual. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a tan somehow. Um, <laughs> What we as a human race did starting in March where most of the world locked down all at once mm -hmm. uh, to stop this insidious infection in its tracks saved millions upon millions of lives. And never in human history has the entire planet all united around one goal in that type of way before. Yeah. And, you know, you could point to, you know, North Korea or, like, Russia didn't do a great job. I mean, there were little outliers. But for the most part, yeah. all of humanity, for several months, all focused on the same thing. And we yeah. all worked to beat the same thing. But nothing bad that happens going forward will undo the fact that we did so much already. Yeah. Is one thing that I want to point out. Because yeah. it's, it's easy awesome. to get disheartened and it's easy to, you know, get down on humanity or the country or your neighbors or whoever when you see people doing things that you don't agree with but the simple fact is we did a great thing and these guys are about to band together and do a great thing for the rest of humanity as well. right well that's it's kind of a dirty dozen thing now like if we're going to go down we're going to save everybody else yep. you know what can we do what can we do we're not getting out of here alive but neither is that thing. Okay, you did it. You found some, there's, some meaning there's an uplift. in this nihil nihilistic film. But neither is that thing. I love that little heartbeat of the musical score. Dum, 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 dum. Yep. You know, it makes me think what you were saying that um, the thing could also be likened to um, toxic ideologies. Absolutely. Because we need to, I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, the whole cancel culture and um, let's, let's erase history. Now, I'm not, I'm not opposed to like taking down, taking down Confederate statues or, or things like that, but, I, but some people are taking it to the extreme, like we need to make sure that certain films never exist. If we're gonna cancel everybody in history that was imperfect or a product of their times. Dude, we're canceling everyone everywhere forever. Right, and, and so I, I look at like racism is a toxic ideology. Absolutely. My opinion is we need to back away from racist equals bad person instead of racist is somebody who needs to see the light. Yeah. Right? So- We need to cancel racism, not racists. No. We can't whitewash history or paint people in broad strokes where if they had if they succumb to a toxic ideology that was all around them, that they are therefore a bad person, right? right? And so if we look at the, the thing in this film, I see that as a, a toxic ideology taking over people. And some people, yeah, it's sad, some people are too far gone. Right. Like they're not gonna come back, right? But we protect ourselves against toxic ideologies by banding together these, all these characters bicker and fight this whole film because they see things differently, they want to do it differently, they have different outlooks on the world and what the plan should be. And then they realize we're all just people. And we've got this common enemy, right, mm -hmm. that's threatening us and keeping, uh, that's threatening our survival. And you look at like societal survival, like we could tear ourselves apart through hate. And so that's what I think, that's my big takeaway from this is we need to unite and see what is the real threat because it's not the people, it's the thing. It's the ideologies. So, you actually did it. We found some good in this nihilistic, terrible slaughter movie. <laughs> I don't want to get arrogant, but- That was an accident. 
I think we can, if we can do that, I'm, I'm going to accept any challenge you throw our way. Human throw centipede, us, here we go. Throw, no, okay. <laughs> I will draw the line. Oh, never mind, I'll take it back. We are very glad that you've all joined us today. Uh, this has been awesome. This has been us. really great, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for bringing this. I, I've been wanting to see this for years, and this finally gave me the reason. Uh, as always, if you'd like to meet with me, there's a link down below for a free 15-minute consultation. There's also a link if you'd like to buy the film or rent it to watch. Uh, I recommend highly that you do if you have you know, a decent tolerance for like squeamish type stuff. Hey guys, you know how at the top of the show I always say I'm a filmmaker who needs therapy? Well, I made a film this time to prove that I, can, I don't just need therapy, I actually also make films. Anyway, you can watch it on Telekinesis Studios, which is my other YouTube channel, and it's up there. It's called Bedtime. It's uh, pretty scary. My voice totally cracked. It's uh, pretty scary, kind of like The Thing, but it's not really gross like The Thing. I'm ready, Daddy. Dude, you scared me. But it is scary, so maybe don't watch it with little kids. My kids didn't watch it. They helped make it. They're going to need therapy a lot more than me. Uh, like, subscribe, please tell your friends because we're on a movement here to help people embrace principles that will bless their lives through a really unique, cool way. Yeah. So until next time, be good to yourselves and others. Assimilate everyone and watch, watch movies. movies. Why don't we just wait here for a little while, see what happens.